have to be honest and say that the initial discovery was totally serendipitous. Uh, we weren't playing for it, we didn't have a forensic background. Uh, we were looking at some basically academic related inorganic chemistry and then realized that in the process of that, we were actually developing fingerprints on some glassware that we were uh, exposing to the process that we were using. And then we kind of put two and two together, especially given that at that point, there were a number of papers out in chemical journals where people were looking at new techniques to actually develop fingerprints. So that, that told us that this was an important consideration. Um, well, it's going to be a bit of a game changer once it hits the market on the basis that it's a one-stage process that develops finger marks or fingerprints from substances or articles that, quite frankly, previously were difficult or impossible. So art articles that have been under a great deal of stress, fired ammunition cases, for instance, or things that have been deliberately washed. I've always been looking out for new fingerprint development techniques to add to the sort of suite of things that we have available to us and um, I noticed the work that Loughborough had been doing in the paper they'd written and, and saw it as a revolutionary technique. It was able to do things that other processes that we have available to us couldn't do. Um, and at that stage um, it was really how we took it forward. We were looking at uh, improving our recovery rates for forensics um, on operations for a number of different applications. So the obvious thing to do was um, to liaise directly with Steve and uh, Cast to see what was available and what was moving forward. I think this project wouldn't have succeeded without a collaborative uh, approach. Loughborough were bringing the fundamental understanding of the chemistry behind the process, having been the developers, and also an understanding of novel chemistries that could be applied to the problem we had here. Um, DSDL had an operational need, an understanding of the, the operational context, and then more importantly, a project and the funding to drive it forward. And we bring to the party an understanding of the fingerprint development processes that the police forces are using operationally. And we have a real success in taking things from a laboratory concept to something which is operationally used and out there on the streets. Well, it's a fuming process, so we're degrading a powder to a crystalline form and then allowing that to re-evaporate and the fumes will develop the fingerprints on the substances we're interested in. Yeah, we're looking at a fingerprint on a fired cartridge developed using the new process and I'm looking at it under a range of lighting conditions to see which gives us the best image of that mark. And we can see down to the finest level of detail in the fingerprint, even down to the pores, the third level detail. And why we're interested about this technique is it's capable of developing fingerprints on things that have been fired and washed and there's no single process that can do that. Actually this has been washed with acetone so we've given it quite an aggressive clean as well as the, the firing conditions. Okay so the process works by starting with a precursor in a test tube here. That's heated the fumes from the degradation of the precursor come down into the chamber and condense on the base of this, this chamber here. Once we've got the crystallisation at the bottom, we allow that to re-evaporate and the fumes from that re-evaporated material will develop the fingerprints on the sample. Well, overall it's been about eight years that it's taken us to do this and it's been interesting to work with people we've never worked with before. Massive a lot of help from uh, DSGL. The real eye-opener and the gratifying one has been the fact that people like DSGL and CAST have been very receptive to people like us who have no forensic background. And now there's a whole web of things with all sorts of different people around campus, around the department, uh, lots of different entities, from Home Office to Heritage England and so on, just stemmed from that one observation of one sample vial with one fingerprint on it. There's a moral there somewhere.